d4 by hikaru knight comes out c4 e6 we saw the nimzo indian in classical game but magnus now changes with queen's gambit declined hikaru takes cd ed the exchange variation there bishop comes to g5 this structure which which we have on the board is called the Karlsbad structure uh, and now magnus brings his bishop out to e7 hikaru pushes his pawn pawn to h6 bishop h4 and magnus goes for his line which he's played sometimes bishop g4 f3 comes back look at hikaru's speed of blitzing out moves he's clearly making a statement to magnus that i am well prepared here so be careful magnus also making his moves quickly this is definitely turning into a prep battle black also castles rookie one now this is the new move this is the novelty in the position this position had been reached before was the first time rookie one has been played and you can see hikaru thinking about his move bishop c2 played very interesting choice here just putting his bishop back maybe the bishop can pop out from here to go to a4 also queen can often come here and threaten some things on h7 the time is 9 minutes 36 seconds for hikaru 6 minutes 18 seconds for magnus he goes rook c8 and finishes his development brings all the pieces into the game and now hikaru brings his knight out to f4 this is an interesting move for magnus it's a little bit uh, of a worry that hikaru isn't taking much time on the clock and look at him there just saying i don't really get it you know isn't hikaru blundering a pawn here because somehow there are some tactics that are coming up well magnus says yes it's a mistake hikaru takes on e6 f e6 pawn takes d4 and magnus is he going to take this pawn is he going to do that because knight takes queen takes bishop c5 oh he takes it he takes it and look at hikaru he's not even looking at the board he goes bishop g6 and he looks at magnus and magnus goes back in the chair there's so much of action happening which is unsaid because hikaru is in his prep magnus is a little bit stunned there with the way hikaru is moving the rook is attacked now of course the bishop had to be played so that the knight could not take it and you can see magnus now being very careful and concentrated because it was till one point he thought hikaru was prepared but after knight d4 if hikaru still blitzes out his moves then magnus can be in big trouble now so the rook first needs to be saved there's no other way you go to f8 and then hikaru hits the knight the knight has to move back and then the rook snatches the pawn which would give white a huge advantage magnus down to five minutes hikaru still with nine minutes 23 seconds he has he's building up a five minute edge on the clock he goes rook f8 and now hikaru brings his bishop back to f2 excellent move now magnus needs to move his knight away and then the rook will take this pawn we'll assess the position that takes place after that rook takes e6 so we have the situation now five minute advantage to hikaru clearly better position out of the opening and there he takes a sip of water calms himself down because the first phase has definitely ended well for him now the knight is attacked where do you go the best move now is to go knight to e2 because you can't really i mean you can go knight e4 but then knight d5 and suddenly everything looks a little bit blocked in there so that's the reason why knight e2 attacking the pawn on d4 makes a lot of sense you then have one two and three attackers and it's not so easy to defend this d4 pawn so hikaru rightly taking a taking his time here because this is the first move that he's uh, come out of his prep magnus very focused and he plays his knight to e2 the best move is on the board you can bank on hikaru and magnus to find some of the best moves after all they are the two best speed players on the planet and now how does magnus continue there's one way to just give up this pawn to go knight d5 and tell magnus that if you want to take this please be my guest uh, you are looking at the f4 square so basically if knight here then knight takes uh, if bishop takes here then knight f4 and it is trouble time so actually magnus can go for this knight d5 move but he is thinking and it's uh, a bit worrisome right for magnus because he's down to now three minutes on the clock and he's just made 20 moves and then in the end 
you would get only one second increment per move after move 40 and that generally isn't enough to even think a bit it's just enough to make your moves well magnus can defend the pawn as well in the center with bishop c5 that is definitely possible well you if you play queen d7 trying to trap this rook here there's bishop f5 so magnus goes for bishop c5 which is very logical he defends the pawn but now hikaru can actually play rook c1 hit the bishop here right in the center or there's also another strong move queen b3 trying to put some kind of a discovery and also attack the b7 pawn you can also play knight to f4 where the knight is then joining in into the battle in a very very brutal way because these are the light squares are the weaknesses in black's camp and black is missing the dark the light squared bishop so after knight f4 you are angling at these light squares so hikaru taking his time rightly so where are you going to use all the time if not now 3 minutes 15 seconds for Magnus, Hikaru down to 7 minutes and a few seconds on the clock. Here one, one idea is definitely Queen B3 and I really like this move because there is 2 attacks there but he goes Knight F4 and this is a nice move. Okay now for Magnus, he goes Knight D5, he unleashes an attack on the Knight here and by the way there are 2 ways for Hikaru to get an advantage. One is to go directly Queen B3, the other is to take take and play this beautiful move bishop c2 so that if the rook is taken there's bishop b3 what is he going to choose out of these two moves because queen b3 is such a classy move we finds it queen b3 on the board if you take rook takes f4 there's rook e8 check and you lose the queen and if knight takes f4 then there's a deadly disco look at hikaru there sitting in his chair like a boss he knows that he is winning here he knows that the game is Magnus is in trouble. Magnus makes the move. Clearly knowing that his position is bad. Rook d8. And now he can take back. Rook takes d8. The resulting position is better for white. Because white has a queen for a rook and knight. And Magnus thinking about with which piece to recapture. He can take with the knight. Take with the rook. Take with the other rook. Because knight defends the b7 pawn. He takes back with the C rook. He now has 2 minutes 24 seconds as compared to Hikaru's 7 minutes. What could be more winning than this? Hikaru has a better position. 5 minutes edge on the clock. And now let's see if he can manage his nerves. Because one of the most difficult things to do against Magnus is keep your control on the nerves. But Hikaru has managed to do that well recently. Especially since the time he's been saying that you know, chess is no longer my main profession. Streaming is, he doesn't feel those nerves in such moments. Queen takes b7, is taken. Now the knight is hanging. So if you take the bishop, I take your knight. And then I attack the knight and the bishop both. So again, a bold move there by Hikaru. Really calling out Magnus' calculations in this game. Knight comes to e5. Now both the knights are actually threatening the bishop. The bishop has to move. Maybe bishop e4 is a good move here. Just centralizing the bishop. You know, you want to make such solidifying moves where you have pieces on good squares protected by the pawns so that you don't have to worry under time pressure. Bishop b6 played. All of Magnus' hopes now lie on this pawn because if this pawn starts to run down the board, it can create quite a lot of trouble for Hikaru. Also, having two knights next to the white king is never an easy task to manage because there are checks coming in from everywhere but what hikaru can now do is destabilize this structure here with a4 a5 and he does it beautiful move there by hikaru nakamura he wants to remove this bishop here from b6 threaten a5 chop this pawn and make this pawn into a queen magnus having two minutes to figure out what to do he plays his knight to c4 Stopping a5 for the time being. Because now a5 of course loses the pawn. It's well defended. But also threatening to take on b2. Threatening knight d2 to sort of attack this bishop on e4. And now what is the what is Hikaru going to do? He has to be calm here. Like for example a move like b3 is met with knight a5. What a move by Hikaru Nakamura. 
absolutely love it. He take he hits the knight. If you take here, he's seen queen b5 traps the knight. This is some insane bit of calculation here by Hikaru. It's also showing why Magnus finds it so difficult to play against him. It's not just because Hikaru plays fast or is, you know, has great intuition. He calculates and he calculates sharp lines. He looks at these little details, these little nuances here. And Magnus now once again has to look at them in his limited time, 1 minute 21 seconds, and makes the move knight d2, attacking the bishop and wanting to take it because once it's taken, the rook opens up and there can be some interesting things that could happen on the f file and the diagonal. a5 played so that if you take here on e4, I can actually interpose a takes b6 in the position. So Magnus now plays bishop c5. He keeps his bishop on the board. And Hikaru now has many moves at his disposal, but the most accurate of them is bishop b7, keeping the bishop in the game. Is he going to play this? Magnus down to minute and 14 seconds. Hikaru has four and half minutes on the clock. So Hikaru doing very well on the time. He's also using his time pretty well and keeping his advantage. In fact, increasing his advantage right now. He has a plus three advantage in the position. Okay, there are some threats of knight b3 attacking the rook and the pawn. We'll see how Hikaru deals with them. But for now, I think the main thing is to get this bishop out of the way. Because if you don't do that and you play a move like rook d1, takes, takes, it doesn't feel right, you know, this position. So he goes bishop b7. Again, the most ambitious and the best move in the position played by Hikaru Nakamura. Rook f6, if you try to attack the queen, the queen just comes out. Magnus now needs to move quickly. He plays knight to b3, attacking the rook. The rook can, of course, come back right into the center. And I think it wants to be there on d1. On d1, it will stop the pawn from advancing further. And I think that's the best move there. Hikaru plays it. Rook d1, 3 minutes 52 seconds. Magnus pushes the pawn. Fantastic here. Chess going on. Because see what Magnus wants now. Is he wants to push d2. Maybe get his rook from e8 to e1. Also, if you take the bishop, knight c5 attacks the queen and the bishop. This is already good enough often for many white players to not play this move. But let's go deeper. After taking knight takes, you are attacking these two. But what I can do is I can chop this pawn, attack your knight so that there's no time to pin me because your knight is hanging. Whoa, Hikaru takes the bishop on c5, knight takes and queen a7. Such amazing calculations here. The knight has to move now. And if you take the bishop, which looks very logical because this is a very strong bishop, then after queen b7, the a pawn is absolute monster. Now, all that Hikaru needs to do is take care of the d pawn. d2, rook e1 is the threat. The best way how you can deal with this is to play queen f7 attacking the knight. It would be a fantastic move because after queen f7, d2, you can simply take here. And after takes, the rook is hanging. So these are little very accurate moves and if hikaru finds this magnus would not even have an iota of counterplay here but the most natural move to play here is g3 because you want to kick this knight away it's the most natural way to play 46 seconds for magnus he looked up at the screen wanting to know how many moves are completed we are on move number 35 now which means magnus has to make six more moves before he starts getting one increment one second increment per move hikaru you can feel it. Yeah, he's getting a bit nervous here because he knows he's completely winning. He wants to push his pawn, but look, a6, d2 is coming in. So he plays g3. And now Magnus, of course, going to play d2. He's thinking here and plays it. d2 on the board. Now, king f1, very important move to be played. Yes, there are lines to be calculated after knight d3, but all of them end in white's favor. King f1 has to be played. What Hikaru must avoid is queen b4 because it's a very logical move. Looking at the even square, stopping this. But then Magnus has a killer blow. So Hikaru must go king f1. And then let's say after knight d3, you take here and you are completely winning this position. There's no real problems there. And if knight d5, then also you should take here knight e3, king e1. And you're somehow saving everything so this is the moment where hikaru has to calculate but he's already down to one minute and a few seconds place queen before blunders 
Magnus instantly finds rook d4. What a move by Magnus Carlsen. The queen can no longer remain on this diagonal. Queen takes rook is met with knight e2 check. And this is over. Queen c3 with knight e2 check. Rook e1 coming in. Hikaru has blundered. Needs to give up his queen. Rook takes. Look at Magnus. He knows he's back in the game. He's now a piece up. But Hikaru has three pawns. And these three pawns are very, very dangerous. They can start moving down the board. 96 played. Let's go. Hikaru plays b4. I really liked how Hikaru recovered from that and gave up his queen. Of course, he would be upset because he was completely winning. Now, he has also a minute on the clock. Magnus has 24 seconds. King g8 comes in. b5. Look at those white pawns. They are quite dangerous. Magnus tries to attack them. But Hikaru is now once again in a better position. He needs to push a pawn forward. a6 is how you continue. But rook a2 also playable. Hikaru taking some seconds off his clock. He's shaking. What he's unhappy with is not his current position. But from where he's reached here. He was so winning. And this is why chess is difficult. Because you start going back a few moves. Hikaru needs to come back to the present moment. And see that his position is still filled with a lot of possibilities. King e7 played. And now Hikaru has more time. He has 45 seconds. Magnus has 15. He pushes his pawn. Magnus brings his knight to blockade the pawn. The king comes up. King comes to defend. Oh, and Hikaru changes tracks. He goes to the other side, which is very smart. Because now Magnus needs to be very careful on how he's going to deal with the and play on both sides. H4 played. He wants to play H5 and then move in with his king somehow. Magnus has very little time. Four seconds. Plays king d5. I think Magnus is not ready for this time sort of uh, battle here. King c6 played. H5 played. Excellent move by Hikaru. Goes rook g8. Magnus down to one second. Plays his move as two seconds. Can he play so fast? King b5. He takes. Rook takes. And now king h5 played. And Magnus loses on time. Oh, look at Magnus. He's so unhappy. He was 